In this video, we are going to take a look at the Civil 3D survey points and creating some points manually, not from a file itself. Now, there are a few handy tips and tricks that I've used over the years to create these survey points for me and to make my life easier and just take you through the settings. So there's a couple ways of us creating these points. We can right click on points over here and go create. We can come up under the drop down points, create points. And as well, we can do this through the ribbon under points, point creation tools. So the point creation tool dialog box, uh, this button here is how we bring a survey file in. This is not where we're gonna be going through. It's the other manual options though. So if we take a drop down here, click the drop down, we have some, and hover over buttons and it should tell you what they are, miscellaneous manual creation tools. So we have manual, we can do automatic along lines and curves, polyline vertices. We can even convert AutoCAD points as long as they have a Z value to them. It'll pick up the X and Y, but we also need a Z value. We can do some distance directions, perpendiculars, station offsets, measure along alignment, dividing along of alignment, imports points from a file. Random, we can do a grid of points. Interpolate, relative location, high, low points, slope grades, distances, etc. So a lot of tools here we can play with. However, before you start clicking buttons, take a look at the options that are down below. Now, Autodesk loves to hide very important information behind little arrows that hide things. So if you ever see an arrow, make sure to click it because all the important information is hidden below this arrow. So when we go to make points, the default layer, what layer do they go to default? In this case, mine will go to C survey existing, but you can come in here and change this. Coordinates, do we want northing, easting, easting, northing? So X, Y, Y, X, etc. Grid coordinates, uh, northing and easting, geographic, lat and long. Do we want it to prompt for elevations? Yes or no? If we go manual, we'll have to type it in. Point names, manually, we'll have to type them in. Descriptions, we can set this for manual or we can set it for automatic to create a whole bunch of points at once. We can set a default elevation, a default description. And you can, if you're making a whole bunch of points of one type, you can set that up. Uh, point style is gonna use existing ground and description for the label style. And then point group name template. So if we make a point group, it'll name it for us, or we can come and create one after and name it manually. Points, use point number. So where do we want to start? One. Another thing I want to point out is the point name template here. So when it creates a point, it's going to start naming at one, incrementing by one. As you create more points, this number will change. So just keep that in mind. If you have to delete those points, come in there and change it. Point number offset, sequence point numbers from one. If point numbers already exist, notify, renumber, merge, overwrite. If point numbers need to be added, use next point number. So a lot of options are, uh, behind this little hiding arrow. Now I want you to take a look at this drop down here. We only have two, four, six, eight, ten, 12, 13 options here. However, if we come into the points drop down, and go create points miscellaneous. We have, I think, 16 options here. So we get a few more, sorry, a few more options here under this command. So I'm gonna run through a manual creation, just of a quick couple points here, and we're gonna make some information up. So I'm gonna click the drop down, select manual, and select the location for the new point. So I'm just gonna put in a couple survey markers. We're just gonna guess the numbers for them. So we can type the information in. So say we wanted one at 690, 718.305. I'm just, again, making this up. 5668536.654. We'll hit enter. Then it asks you for the point name. So when we're naming points, what do we want to name this? Point names, you can only have one point with a specific name. So point one, point two, point three, et cetera. You could go as far to do this as ASCM number, and we're just making up a survey marker that probably does not exist. So 736251, then it asks you for the point description. 
I'm going to again label this ASCM number 736251. Then it asks you for an elevation. And I'm just making up an elevation here to manually put this point in. And it has placed it approximately where my mouse was. And I use that with, along with the coordinates down here to make up a number. So if we have to put the odd survey point in, that is an easy way to do it. If we switch all this to automatic though, elevations, names, description, automatic, turn everything to automatic here, create a manual point. We click in and it's there. But it does not have any information underneath uh, attached to it. So it just has an easting, oops, easting and northing. No elevation, it just assigned name point one. There are no descriptions, no label styles, etc. So a couple different ways of doing things. Another handy command that I've used, and this is a this is really handy in the construction industry when you go to publish your project, give it to the contractor. If we're designing a road, I would go along and create a grid of points because usually we send a grid of points out. We'll catch the back of sidewalk, uh, front of sidewalk, edge of asphalt, center line, other edge of asphalt, back of, front of sidewalk, back of sidewalk, etc. So I would go along and I would click, I would click in a location of where I would want to provide a survey point to the client or the contractor. And I would make one long polyline. So this polyline could be a thousand nodes long, but I have more control in this than I do doing it manually. So creating a massive polyline and with the ability to edit it and modify it and delete those points and start again has saved me a ton of time. Then I would come down and create uh, polyline vertices manual or automatic, sorry. And I would click on the polyline and hit enter. This is really great if all of them are the same description and whatnot, because then we can take these points and not the polyline, right click, elevations from surface. I could pick up elevations from my design surface if I had one. So if you had to create points along a back of sidewalk and a front of sidewalk and a edge of asphalt and a center line, maybe five or six different polylines running down the length of the road, which you can easily extract from your corridor as well. So all this becomes a really quick and easy process. Now say I forget to add a point and the contractor wants them in all order. I could come to my polyline, I could add a vertex, click where I wanted it, delete these points, come back into this window, create uh, point number one, which already exists because of that manual, the one I created. So we'll have to go to polyline vertices automatic. And there's all my points again with the new one that I've included. And it would start with point two, three, four, etc. So creating manual points, it's as simple as that. Go through the commands, look at the tools, station offsets, along lines and curves, a lot of different information here. And the one I've used a lot too is convert AutoCAD points.